So welcome to this tutorial. We're going to take a look at two different scenarios here. One in which we're trying to establish the molar solubility of a sparingly soluble salt in pure water, and one in which we are trying to establish the molar solubility of that same salt, but this time in a solution that contains a common ion. So the compound that we're going to use is going to be lead to iodide. It's going to have a relatively low solubility because both lead compounds and iodide compounds generally tend to have low solubilities. This one's going to be no exception because we can see from its KSP, 9.8 times 10 to the negative 9, that it is in fact fairly low. So the first thing we need to do, as we have done with all equilibrium questions that we go to solve, is write out our equilibrium equation. Now take note that I've written two iodide ions and not I2. When an iodide compound dissociates, it will dissociate into individual iodide ions, not into an I2 complex or into elemental iodine or iodine gas. I've also included the KSP just for reference sake. And now, since we know the KSP, we have to set up an ice table. Now you should be fairly familiar with ice tables at this point. The only difference between this ice table and others is you will notice that we have on our reactant side a solid, which means the only thing that we're looking at initially are going to be the concentrations of those ions. And since we are adding a solid, we're gonna treat the initial concentrations of these ions as zero. That is, these ions haven't formed yet because initially we have just added the solid. And we can see based on the coefficients that the lead ion is gonna go up by some factor X and the iodide ion is going to go up by some factor 2x. And therefore our equilibrium values are going to be x and 2x respectively. Now that we've done the ice table, we can write out our KSP expression. And again, it's no different than any other KSP expression that we've done. We are going to take the concentrations of those particular ions that are produced. We're going to raise it to the exponent that represents the coefficient from the equation. And we are not going to have anything in the denominator. Now, since we know the KSP, we can include that in our calculation, 9.8 times 10 to the negative 9, and we can start to input our variable x into our expression. Now we can start to simplify, and again you will note that everything in the bracket gets squared, so it becomes 4x squared, 4x squared times x gives us our 4x cubed. Now I'm going to combine a couple of steps here, I'm going to go right to solving for x, x is going to be equal to the cubed root of 9.8 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 4. Now if you're not sure where I got that from, just take a quick look at how we're solving for x. Notice that first we're going to have to divide both sides by 4, so it will become 9.8 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 4, and then I'm going to have to take the cubed root of both sides. And in doing this, we get a value of 1.3 times 10 to the negative three. Now what the X represents for us is the concentration of the lead ions at equilibrium. That is at the point of saturation, we have that concentration of lead ions, or more specifically lead two ions. Now if we notice the ratio between the lead two iodide and the lead two ions is one to one. So the way that we achieve or the way that we get to X is by that amount of the lead two iodide dissociating which means that the molar solubility of this particular compound at this particular temperature is 1.3 times 10 to the negative three. And it is a molar solubility, so we are gonna represent it in moles per liter. So that's how we would go about determining the molar solubility of a sparingly soluble salt in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius. But let's present a different scenario here. Let's present one in which this is no longer pure water, but instead a solution that contains an ion that is present in the salt that we're trying to dissociate. So in this case, we're going to take a look at what the molar solubility is for a compound of lead 2 iodide when it dissolves or dissociates in a solution that already contains 0.20 moles per liter of sodium iodide. So the way that we're going to start this is by writing out, as we typically always do with these equilibria, the equilibrium equation. So in this case, it's going to be no different than the equilibrium equation that we wrote out for the last tutorial. In the last scenario, we're going to have lead two, iodine, lead two ions being formed, and we are going to have two 
iodide ions being formed. We're going to keep it under the same conditions as last time, so our KSP is actually going to be the exact same as last time as well. We are going to use the ice table here. The initial concentration of the lead ion is going to be zero, but the initial concentration of the iodide ion is not going to be zero. So we know that all alkali metal compounds are readily soluble. Sodium iodide is no exception. It's going to dissociate effectively completely. So if we know the concentration of the sodium iodide, which we do at 0.20 moles per liter, then we know the concentration of the iodide ions in that solution at time zero. Now it's just a matter of filling in our table as we would before. And if we take a look at our equilibrium values, it's going to be 0.20 plus X for the iodide ions, and of course just X for lead, which, as we know, is ultimately going to represent our molar solubility for the lead to iodide. Now, just a quick note, don't get too confused with the two that we see in front of the iodide ion and the fact that it didn't have any effect on the initial concentration of the iodide ions. Remember, the source of the iodide ions was the sodium iodide, not the lead to iodide. And sodium iodide dissociates in a one-to-one -one ratio. So whatever the concentration was of the sodium iodide, that's going to be the concentration of our iodide ions initially. The source of the ions has nothing to do with the lead to iodide and the way that it is going to dissociate. Now, take a look at our KSP. It's extremely low. And what we know about really low K values is that we can perform a test sometimes to make our analysis easier. Now, remember, this test is the initial concentration over our K. The last time we saw this was involving Kc, but as I said, you can do it with any equilibrium constant. In this case, we're analyzing Ksp, so we're going to use our Ksp. And if we perform the calculation, we're going to find that we get a value that is, again, extremely high. So what this means for us is we can negate any change from the initial concentration that is not zero. In this case, even though it's being added, we still can negate this change in x. So we can write out our KSP expression, no different than we've done before. And now we can start plugging in the values that we have that represent our different variables. So notice because we negated x due to our test that this is going to make our calculations a lot easier. I am going to combine a couple of steps here. So this is what we are left with. Now we just need to solve for x. And in solving for x, we get 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7. Now remember, x for us does represent our molar solubility. There is a 1 to 1 ratio between the lead ions and the lead to iodine that's dissociating. So what that means for us is our molar solubility is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. So if you look back at your notes, you may recall that the molar solubility of the lead 2 iodide at this temperature in pure water was 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. That's significantly greater than the molar solubility that we've established here. But that should make sense because in this particular instance, we already have the presence of an ion, the iodide ion, in this particular solution meaning the concentration of lead ions and iodide ions that are going to be needed to achieve saturation or to reach the molar solubility is going to be significantly lower in this instance. So after watching this video, hopefully you not only understand how to calculate molar solubility both in pure water and in a solution already containing a common ion, but that you're able to justify the difference between the two values. Thanks for watching.